Uh, so well, welcome, everybody. Yeah, if you don't know who I am, I'm James Montemagno. I'm a, a program manager over at Microsoft. Uh, I'm on the .NET community team. Uh, and my passion is mobile development and desktop development with Xamarin. Uh, I worked on the Xamarin uh, team at Xamarin before our acquisition uh, four years ago now. Oh, my goodness. Uh, basically, uh, three and a half, four years ago. That's a while ago now. Um, I guess four years. Yeah, uh, four and a half years. Oh, my goodness. That's crazy. Time flies. Uh, uh, Microsoft. So I've been doing uh, C sharp development for probably two decades now, or decade and a half, 20, yeah, 2005, yeah, about 15 years. Xamarin development for about nine years. Uh, I joined Xamarin because I loved creating mobile applications uh, in C sharp with .NET. And I wanted to help others be able to do what I was loving. So I, I joined Xamarin as a developer advocate. And now at Microsoft, um, on the community team, I'm a manager, and our team is focused on ensuring that all of .NET is, is a warm, welcoming place and uh, give everyone the tools to learn how to become an awesome C-sharp, F-sharp, VB.NET developer, building apps for anything. Uh, and my focus, obviously, is still on mobile. Um, so what I'm going to do tonight is give everyone, hopefully, uh, an introduction to what Xamarin is, if, if you don't kind of know in the last kind of I'd say a few years, sort of, it's changed quite a lot from when I started nine years ago and just sort of what the platform offers for developers, but really where we're going um, with uh, the platform uh, going forward with a lot of the changes that we have coming with not only Visual Studio, but .NET around .NET 5 and .NET 6. So uh, I'm really excited about that. Uh, you can find me anywhere at James Montemagno, that's my name. And you can Google it, you can Bing it, you can follow me on Twitch, you can follow me on Twitter, on GitHub's, all the things. Uh, that's my name. You can find me. So uh, when I started mobile development nine years ago, I was really tasked with building a Windows app, an iOS app, and an Android application. And, and I knew a little bit of Java, and I knew a little bit of uh, C++ from my video game uh, development days. But I had fallen in love with C Sharp and Visual Studio, and, that, and that's really what I wanted to create. And the beautiful part about Xamarin and their mission and goal to delight developers was to enable them uh, to build cross-platform applications for any platform with .NET and C Sharp. And that's still the mission of the Xamarin team today. So this is sort of what the traditional sort of Xamarin development looked like, which was um, I was able to share my shared C Sharp business logic um, and build out beautiful native apps for iOS, Android, Windows, Mac, any other .NET platform and share code with my website, my backend, Azure Functions now, anything, right? So I get to live in a super productive IDE. I get to create native applications that are high performance, uh, access and create native user interface, and also access the native APIs in C Sharp, which I really enjoyed. Now, over the years, though, the, the landscape of mobile development has really changed. Um, there's more platforms, there's tablets to be concerned about, there's TVs, there's watches, there's wearables, there's IoT, uh, there's different you know, desktop operating systems to support. And, and at the same time, there's been a shift sort of in how developers want to build cross-platform applications which is they want to share more code. They want them to still be native and, and high performance and access those native APIs. So the Xamarin platform has shifted over the years to listen to our developers using the product and develop libraries and frameworks that they want to use and um, embed rich, deep integrations in Visual Studio so you're super productive. So really today, this is what Xamarin development looks like is not only are you able to share your C-sharp business logic, but there's two everly increasing libraries as part of Xamarin that enable you to build cross-platform native user interface, which is Xamarin Forms, and then Xamarin Essentials, which abstracts away the platform APIs into a single shareable cross-platform library. So you can access things like um, the camera, uh, file pickers, connectivity, um, a whole bunch of different APIs, which I'll, which I'll talk about in depth tonight. And, and that's really what I want to talk about is everything that's in the platform. It's much more than a UI library. It's much more than tooling. It's much more than native API access. It's the full package of being able to use all of the things that you know and love in Visual Studio, 
while still being able to get down and access every single part of iOS, Android, Mac, or Windows that you want to, and sharing a vast amount of code between all of them. Now, at the same time that it's great that we have the basic building blocks, there's also an immense, amazing community that's built up around .NET and Xamarin over the years, not only from amazing control vendors like Telerik and DevExpress and Syncfusion, but amazing open source um, libraries from you, the, the .NET community. So um, things like Skia Sharp and Akavash and Aurora Controls and Reactive Extensions and SQLite, um, they're just amazing amazing resources. So if you're already a .NET developer, there's tools and integrations and libraries that you can use. And we want to be ensured, like the team is always conscious, like, hey, you can build this stuff and we can build on top of this and it's an amazing community. But the Xamarin team is always really focused on productivity and helping to get developers started faster and be productive. So one thing that the team really focused on was shrinking down the installation time of Xamarin and all the components to make sure that you had a, a, a more delightful experience um, when you're installing Visual Studio. So they actually reduced the size of the overall inside by, by one third. So nearly you know, one third as big from 23 gigs on to six gigs. And it also means that it's twice as fast to install. So when you go and check that checkbox, um, it means that you're going to get started faster than ever, which I think is super important. And additionally, if you already have the prerequisites installed, like Java or different Android SDKs, you'll actually have to install less, so it won't duplicate the work. And the team's really been focused on ensuring that developer productivity, not only getting started faster, but also ensuring that you can code faster and more productive. So through the last year or two, the team has shipped a whole bunch of great productivity features in the libraries, but also in Visual Studio. So the team has integrated and worked with the IntelliCode team um, for not only um, Android XML, but XAML and C Sharp, which means that you can get rich AI-driven IntelliSense as you type, basically your code <laughs> writes itself. Um, they've integrated into SourceLink, so if you're a third-party um, library, um, people can debug into your source code, which is awesome. And also the ability to multi-deploy uh, across multiple apps at the same time. Writing code and getting this IntelliSense is good, but they're also focused on build times and deploy times. And we'll talk about a lot of improvements here where even though the team has been focused on reducing build times by up to 50% and deploy times, there's many things that the team is doing to ensure that you don't have to keep deploying over and over again. So we're continually iterating, even hundreds of milliseconds are shaving off. It's really important as we continue to develop the product and listen to feedback. Now, as you're going through and you're actually developing your application and getting ready to release, the team specifically on Android has integrated in a whole bunch of new technologies, such as startup tracing and ahead of time compilation. So your app can start nearly 60% times faster by just simply checking a checkbox, which is really awesome. And also integrating into some of the great new tooling from Google, such as Android app bundles. And Android app bundles are the, the new standard for delivering um, apps to Google. And what that does is it creates like this mega package and Google on the fly will create packages based on the user's device. And this is really cool. The last app that I delivered, um, the, the APK size, so the old way of bundling, it was 24 megabytes total. But when I put it in app bundles and I uploaded it to Google Play, the actual deliverable app was 12 megs. So nearly 50% reduction in size with just a checkbox, which is really cool. And then of course, the team is super integrated in ensuring that hot reload and, and hot restarting of applications is extremely proficient. And what this means is that as you're working on your application, you have to start it less. You can just write code, tweak your user interface, hit save, and just start going, which is super important. So I wanted to kind of talk about this because I think that the entire experience if you haven't started a new Xamarin application in a while, it might be brand new to you. This is where I would do a super sweet demo um, for it, but I have it pre-recorded, so that's good. It's a little bit lower quality, but I'm gonna talk through it 
here. And this is what I really am calling the new Xamarin experience is because to me, when I started nine years ago, none of this stuff really existed. And a lot of it is just coming out of preview today. So if, when you install Visual Studio, this is the type of experience you're gonna get. So let me go ahead and start up the video here. And what I'm gonna do is just come in and create a brand new project uh, over here. And it's a little bit fuzzy, and I do apologize. It was a little bit lower res than I wanted. But I'm gonna create a new project, and we have this brand new sort of dialogue to show you exactly what your app is gonna look like. So flyouts, tabs, but I'm gonna create a blank application here. And uh, I'm also gonna select a, a UWP project on here as well. And what this is gonna do is give me uh, all the things that I need for the project, all right? So this, this in general hasn't changed too much. I get my .NET standard library right there where I can share my user interface, Android, iOS, and Windows. And uh, this is really great because I can share a bulk of my logic up in this .NET standard library right here. My app description, my pages, I can add models and view models. And then these head projects just enable me to, to put in like kind of platform tweaks, if you will. Uh, so when I open up the main page, we have a brand new template to help you be successful from the start. So this kind of tells you a little bit about what Xamarin Forms is, what you can do, and how you can be productive. And it looks a little bit better than just a label in the middle of the screen. Uh, so I'm just going to hit debug here. And um, now I have my, my Windows desktop app. And we can see that hot reload is enabled. This is a new feature that the team just um, pushed out, which is hot reload for UWP with Xamarin Forms. Now this is awesome because I can come in, I can change a color, I don't even have to hit save, and immediately it updates on my desktop. If I make a typo or a change, it just kind of throws that away and it shows me there's an error sort of in my, my XAML, but I can immediately come and change all these colors. And again, I don't even have to hit save, it just automatically um, does it. So this is cool because it's actually stateful. So here I'm gonna add an entry. Um, and as I'm um, typing in it, um, what's important here is that I can make additional changes over here back to orange and notice that nothing is changed. Like it's still stateful. It still knows that it has that, that data in the entry because it's doing an iterative swap it's only changing that property on the basically the DOM, if you will. If there was a DOM, we'll pretend there's a DOM, but kind of the hierarchy. But some of the new tooling integrates into things that when uh, WPF and UWP developers have loved, such as the live visual tree. So that enables me to easily hop around in my application logic here to um, edit and adjust any of the pages. And this is super helpful when you have a very, very large XAML page. Now, let's say I go in and I start adding some data binding here, though. This is something that maybe you have in a view model, uh, or in this case, I'm just going to shove some data properties right in the code behind, because why not? You know, file new demo, and I'm just going to say hello and, and hello, um, hello world here, basically. Uh, so uh, we'll do, of course, fix up the little... Uh, issue with my code and just hit debug again. So of course, you know, I've modified my UI, I'm getting rich kind of IntelliSense, I'm getting hot reload here. And now um, I'm gonna go ahead and deploy again here. It's an early, early version of the, the bits. So I'm gonna wait for it to load. There we go, perfect. Now this is really neat. Um, let's say I wanna set this label to that data binding I set. And let's say I mistype it. So instead of saying hello, I just put one L. And what's cool is that I've turned on a brand new um, XAML binding failures feature. And we can see in the overlay that there's a binding failure. And I can tap on it and it shows me that there is a typo in my actual data binding. So I don't get crashes, I don't get issues, and I'm getting alerted that it's there. And then it goes away, which is really, really nice. So that enables me to be really productive without even having to boot up an emulator or a simulator or anything like that, um, right from my Windows desktop application. But now let's go ahead and just spin this up on an Android emulator, 
which the team has done a lot of work to enable Android emulators with Hyper-V so they're proficient on an AMD processor or if you have Docker or Hyper-V enabled. Um, and what this will do is compile up my Android application with all the changes that I just made too. So we're going to see it deploy, launch. And what I think is really important about this new experience is feature parity. So what we see on the left-hand side is that I get the same exact visual tree that I had over on Windows over on my Android application. I get the same exact hot reloading here that's stateful in my application. So I can get all of those changes that I was taking advantage of. Over here, I get the same XAML binding failures when I see it there which is nice. And the team is actually working on like an adornment, kind of sort of an overlay for it too. But while I can get all of those great XAML features, often if you're working in iOS and Android, um, there's sometimes changes to the core platform that aren't in XAML, right? Here, I'm going to modify um, some of the colors of the, of the base system in, in Android style XML. So here, I'm going to change the accent color to, let's say, black, for example. Um, I can go in and, and change this. So that way, the accent color, the little underline, uh, is, is black instead of pink. So instead of stopping my application and restarting and going through a bunch of things, I'm going to tap a button up top, which is called Android Apply Changes. And just like that, it takes a diff of my code and reapplies those changes on the Android level, which is cool. So we're no longer in XAML, we're no longer in high-level things, we're actually inside of the core of that. And it just quickly replaces that immediately, which is awesome. So productive inside of the core experience. Now iOS is, is pretty fascinating because you need to deploy and usually need to connect to a Mac and go through hoops and bounds. But what we've done is created a new piece of technology that enables a new scenario to deploy directly to a device. And we call it Hot Restart. So I have my iOS device plugged into my Windows machine, right into my desktop. And when I hit debug, it says, hey, let's set up Hot Restart. This is going to enable me to deploy immediately to my iOS device or right from my Windows machine. So um, it's really a nice way of being able to deploy um, if you have an iOS device nearby. So here I've actually plugged in my device. It's detected the device there. And I've signed into my Apple account so I can select my Apple program here. So I still need kind of like the normal registration, things like that with Apple. But it's going to handle basically all the provisioning, all the hard work behind the scenes, enabling me to deploy to my device. So literally five, six seconds going through, I'm able to start bundling up that package, development package, and then deploy it. So here I'm actually going to screen mirror my, my iOS phone that's plugged into my Windows machine with an application called Reflector, and it's pretty, pretty quick. And uh, there's all my apps over there, so we'll put it over here. And what we're going to see is that Visual Studio is packaged up a full app, and it's asking me to, to launch it. So I will. So let's go ahead and do that over here. And we can see I have the same exact uh, application. I get the same exact visual tree. I can make the same exact XAML changes over here um, that I would expect um, inside of my iOS application. Just immediately deploying it, the same exact experience. Now, the reason we call it Hot Restart is because it enables fast deploys of logic without having to stop and restart and rebuild. So here I'll add another property called Hello2, and it's telling me that, hey, you're making changes to a running application, you need to restart. So I'm gonna hit the Restart app uh, button here. And this is pretty cool. So uh, here, um, it's gonna now do a diff, and do a diff of the app, and you see how much faster it was, right? The first time it packaged up a full app, and now it's coming in and it's just doing a diff and replacing basically the DLL inside of there. And I can make, all the changes here, just like I did before, see it sort of come in and boom, I'm getting hello to there, right? So I'm able to hot restart the application and be super duper productive, um, no matter where I'm developing, 
whether I'm developing for Windows, iOS, or Android, the same exact stuff works if I'm over on Visual Studio for Mac and I'm um, debugging a Mac application written with Xamarin Forms, right? You're able to use that same type of technology um, no matter where you're at. Good question over here from um, RJ uh, was about, will it work with the free Apple dev account? No, you need to have a paid um, account. It does work with Visual Studio Community Edition though, but how Apple and their cert how the provisioning and all that stuff works, you have to have a paid account. So it'd be 99 bucks. Basically, if you're gonna do iOS development, you basically just have to give Apple $100. But that's a new experience. Like from start, you get all of that great built-in productivity of XAML hot reloading, the live visual tree, live property editing. Um, you get the rapid iteration with apply changes on Android, with the XAML binding IntelliSense that comes up. And of course, being able to use hot restart, which you see here. And there you go, yeah, 70. Uh, nine uh, uh, euro as well, or I guess uh, not euro, but pounds. There we go. So, and Carl Coe says, does this work with like, um, it works with Xamarin Forms based applications, correct? And there's ways of getting it to work if you're doing that, but you can't really modify storyboards or anything like that. They go through a different process, but everything is 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 basically Xamarin Forms based. And uh, uh, for the, for a lot of the productivity work here. The Android apply changes, that, that works um, with just normal Android stuff as well though. Uh, this is what I think is really cool. So what you see with hot restart is these initial build, initial deploy, and then incremental build and deploy. And this is super uh, important. We took a huge application, uh, which was our smart hotel application and, and saw like, what does this look like? And what we can see is that with hot restart, we're only really sort of bundling up and compiling your code and shoving it into a shell, if you will. And that takes a lot less time, literally 22 seconds compared to 172 seconds. Now, since it's a bigger package, it takes a little bit longer to deploy to the device, but the gains of incremental build and incremental deploy, since it's just diffing, is substantial. So we can see that the incremental build is three seconds compared to 40 seconds. And the incremental deploy of the package is nearly cut in half. So you can imagine that you're doing this over and over and over again. And this is really going to save you tons of time. Um, let's see if we have any more questions here. Bup, 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 bup. So with hot restart, with hot so hot reload is the XAML hot reload, and then hot restart is that deploy technology. Um, it started in Visual Studio on Windows um, for iOS, and there is no, you just plug your device into your Windows machine. Um, there are limitations, of course, because at some point, if you use certain entitlements or you need certain processing like HealthKit or different entitlements or packaging, um, you may, and like different dependencies may, restrict the capability of hot restart and in that case it will notify you and then you will need to connect and do a full actual compilation but again this is just for development purposes it's not creating a final package that you're going to deliver or anything like that um but yeah you in that demo i only had a windows machine and then no ios device so there you go um for normal deployment though and development of course you're going to need to build and ship your application, build that package on a, a Mac machine to deploy to the App Store, follow the EULAs and guidelines that Apple has for packaging and building applications. But as far as development purposes, Hot Restart gets you um, a whole heck of the way there and you can build really advanced stuff um, all the way with Hot Restart. I, with all my applications, I've used it and not run into any issues. So. That's just sort of the new Xamarin experience. I think hot reload and hot restart are really the focal point there. But it's important that you see that you're getting this end-to-end -end experience of great productivity tools, no matter if you're developing with Xamarin or without Xamarin. If you're just developing WPF and UWP apps, you're still going to get a lot of that great productivity, the live visual tree, the XAML binding um, uh, error handling, and all that XAML hot reload. But all of that goodness, since we're one big team here working to ensure developer productivity, you're going to get all that. Now, 
What I want to talk about next are three pinnacle parts of the Xamarin platform that we are building together with the community. One is Xamarin Forms, which we've talked about a little bit. The next is the Xamarin Community Toolkit and Xamarin Essentials. So I want to work through that. Now, Xamarin Forms is our cross-platform native UI stack um, that enables developers to build for iOS, Android, and Windows, and more platforms that are supported by the community. Now, what's really cool is that over the last year plus or so, there's been tons of enhancements, new features, new things shipped as we continue to listen to the development community and also get awesome contributions from that community as well. So we're all building this thing together. So we've shipped as a team and community amazing features in Xamarin Forms from some of my favorites that I've helped do, such as the checkbox, but drag and drop, which is awesome for dual screen devices, embedded fonts, accessibility enhancements, um, swipe views, source link integration, uh, modal pages, a whole bunch of really awesome things, refresh view that have really come a long way. So you can just install Xamarin and create that new project for Xamarin Forms and get everything that you need. Now, while there's been tons of enhancements, I want to talk about what the team is doing specifically with the next version of the current preview, which is Xamarin Forms 5. Now, there's been all of these enhancements through the last year or so plus, but some of the substantial ones that developers have really been just grasping onto and waiting for have been experimental under a feature flag. So things like brushes, um, solid and gradient brushes, and shapes passing clipping, which enable you to basically have a system.drawing namespace, but also drag and drop, expander, media element, radio button, swipe view. They've been in there and they've been baking, if you will. They've sort of just been enhancing, getting closer. And every time you see a new Xamarin Forms 4.6, 4.7, 4.8, you're like, more features, new features, but they're under a feature flag. So the goal with Xamarin Forms 5 is to bring all of these features up into stability while still looking at performance and optimizations of the core platform. So now when you go to Xamarin Forms 5, all of these features that were under experimental flag are going to be just in the box, no feature flag shipped as a core product. And let's talk about those. Really quick, I think some of these amazing features help you build these beautiful applications. So like brushes, you have uh, gradient brushes and strokes that you can do here and you can apply them to anything. So for example, I'm creating a linear gradient brush and I'm just applying it to the entire page. So you can see this gradient that's uh, with multiple stops along the way that I can create. Of course, you know, gradients are great everywhere. You kind of see them on the buttons here, on the back, you know, different, different backgrounds and foregrounds, and you can create these brushes, um, linear and nonlinear as well. Also the carousel view, which I think is uh, builds on top of the collection view, which is a great way of sorting and organizing data, but being able to flip through different data um, is extremely easy with just a few lines of code. You can set what the current item is, if it's animated, if swipe is enabled or not. And you can really um, also specify further um, what it looks like as far as is there a little overlapping? Do you see the corners on the left and right side? And the team just also added um, the ability to have rotating so it goes back to the beginning at the end. Team's also been working on drag and drop. So I think this is an awesome feature. You can not only drag and drop inside of your existing application, but across applications. So if you're building things for like the Surface Duo or other dual screen devices, it'll automatically integrate into the dual screen um, um, system. So here's sort of like the built-in drag and drop. Those gestures are automatically built in. You not only have the ability to specify drag gestures, but drop zones, you can intercept those drop zones, and uh, it will do the right thing in most instances. So if you're dragging images across or dragging text across, it knows Xamarin Forms how to react automatically when you put in these drop zones, which is great. Radio button is also another just small but very helpful addition. But what this is doing is a first iteration what we see, which is control templating. And this is sort of where Xamarin Forms is going in the future, which is templatizing any and all of the different controls. So by default on the top, 
we see just a normal default um, stack layout with a bunch of radio buttons. But what if those radio buttons could have content which specifies what exactly that radio button looks like? So you no longer have to use the default implementation. So here we're saying, hey, use a stack layout with an image and a label, but still give me the functionality of a radio button. And that's what that's doing here. So it gives you that baked in functionality of the radio button, but with the templates that you know and love that you can specify. So you can really customize that UI exactly how you want to do it without having to do any additional work. You just say, here's what it looks like, which is great because that's sort of what you've already been, you know, it's what you kind of do when you're specifying UIs, but now you can do it for any control and everything will be templatized in the future. Shapes and paths, oh my goodness, amazing. Basically anything that you want to do, you can do. So you can have lines, ellipses, paths, you can put SVG data into it, path data, anything you want. And that's how you build these sort of stunning sort of applications. So you can see the dotted lines and ellipses here on the, on the right-hand side. On the left-hand side, you can see that it's combining together not only the boxes that are built in, but to give that sort of little indentation here, we're using a path to sort of cut that out. And you can use any SVG tool, anything like that. You can just shove it in there, which is really cool. That way you don't need to worry about, does this thing support SVG or not back and forth? Swipe view, yet another amazing control that enables you to swipe. Um, so you can add it to anything, not just in a list, like it's built into list view, but you can swipe from the left, from the right, from the top, from the bottom, completely customizable with anything and however you want to build. And what I want to also point out here is that all of these apps that you're seeing are real apps that the development community has built with all of these new features. So these are all things that you have all built to really show the awesome things that you can build with Xamarin with these new layouts and controls. Now, that's just some of the things that are baked into Xamarin Forms 5. And of course, the release schedule is basically kind of every six weeks. Um, 4.7 came out a while ago, 4.8 came out a while ago, about maybe when 5.0 launched, it was a few weeks ago. So it was about just right around the same time as the 5.0 preview. And you can try that out today, um, actually, which is really nice. The full release is expected kind of October, November timeframe. We have .NET Conf coming up, so definitely be on the lookout for that, but definitely give it a, a try. And it's a pretty seamless migration, even though it is a 5.0 release. There are some things that are trimmed out um, that are very legacy and, and old um, that are going to really streamline the production. But I haven't really heard anyone from anyone uh, having any issues on the upgrade, even though it's a major version. So definitely give it a try um, there, which is awesome. Now let's talk about the, the Xamarin Community Toolkit. This might be something brand new to you um, because it's just really got off the ground running in the last few months. So it's amazing to build all of these things into the toolkit, but it takes a community to make absolutely astonishing um, platform for developers. So I showed you earlier the amazing things that the community development team has been building and also um, vendors as well with amazing controls. But the Xamarin team and the community sort of got together and said, you know, we love sort of these community toolkits that have been around that fill the gap in between a bunch of different libraries that are out there and controls that are out there and what's built into the platform. So the community toolkit aims to fill those gaps and act as a way of experimenting with new features before they land in the product or if they're deemed to be in the product. So I talked about these experimental features that are gonna go stable in Xamarin Forms 5, but actually some of them are gonna be removed and put into the community toolkit, such as the c -sharp UI extensions, expander, and media element. These are just things that needed more tweaks and tuning, um, that needed a little bit more time, um, uh, and felt like the Xamarin Community Toolkit was a great place for them. So that way the community can iterate um, on them and build out um, these controls. But the Community Toolkit's much more than just views. It's a whole bunch of other things. So it has behaviors, converters, extensions, helpers, object model happers like async command and observable range collection, and of course, a bunch of views. 
So there's a bunch of stuff built directly into the community toolkit, and it's completely um, open source. We like to say it's built by the community back to my Microsoft. So it's on github.com slash Xamarin slash Xamarin Community Toolkit. And these are things that can be really useful for any developer. And there's tons of stuff. So I put together a little video um, to kind of showcase some of these things. This is their sample app if you download the repo. So things like behaviors, like simple animations that you can add with a few lines of code, you can easily get in there, which is really neat. Um, some other things like mass behaviors. So being only to say you can only enter certain digits, for example. There's, of course, converters and extensions, but awesome controls like this avatar view, this range slider that enables you to take the slider to the max, basically, um, and customize it, which is really cool. Um, the side menu, which is a cool control, so you can slide stuff from the left and from the right. Camera view, which enables you to put a camera inside of your application uh, as well. Uh, which is neat. And uh, also the expander, which I talked about, which enables you to nest all of these controls back and forth into it, which is cool. And yeah, Carl Codes asked specifically, is the Xamarin Community different, uh, community toolkit different than Xamarin Essentials? Yeah, the Xamarin Community Toolkit is specifically for user interface based additions uh, for Xamarin developers. So when I said what was in there, right, you see there's converters, extensions, helpers, these are things that are gonna help you be productive from day one of building applications. So you know, basically code that you don't wanna write uh, or pull from the internet or grab a random NuGet from the, you know, you know, off there, everything is built into this uh, community toolkit for you. So these are things to help you build your user interface faster at the end of the day. Good question. And it's a good question because Xamarin Essentials on the flip side is a complement to the Xamarin Community Toolkit. Xamarin Essentials is our cross-platform library that enables you to access native APIs that are non-user interface based from your shared code. So with Xamarin, right, you can access all of the iOS and Android features from C Sharp, but they're different for each platform often. So Xamarin Essential says, let's bring that all together into one unified API that developers can use. And hopefully it's you know the 80 or 90% of the use case. So when you need to access preferences or email or device information or the connectivity or text-to-speech, it gives you the basic building blocks that you need. And of course, it's all 100% open source, so you can grab the source code too. So these are all of the platform integrations, right? Xamarin Forms is the base level of creating user interfaces. It's a whole framework um, for building apps. Xamarin Community Toolkit are all the UI and helpers that you need to build your UI. And Xamarin Essentials is there to help you bring together all the native integrations. And these are all built out in the open, but they all do different things. For example, Carl asked, like, why isn't this, why isn't everything into one thing? Uh, well, you know, Xamarin Essentials has no UI requirements, so it's not dependent on a version of Xamarin Forms or any of the other things. It can ship independently and add new features and ship updates um, without having to worry about the other um, release schedules of those products. Because once you put everything into one bundle, you gotta you're you're basically having to iterate on three things. Um, all in one, so you, you, you may fix a bug in Xamarin Essentials or, or like a platform API, but you'd have to ship a whole new version that everyone has to upgrade instead of just like a iterative diff of Xamarin Essentials, for example. So yeah, when you think about it, it's like, oh, wouldn't it be nice if everything was just in this one library, right? And But at the end, you, you actually want this clear separation of functionality. So developers, you, you can pick and choose what's right for your application. And I'd say also Xamarin Essentials is a super highly optimized library with advanced linker technology. So while it has a lot of APIs, if you only use the clipboard or you only use geolocation, when you build and compile your, your release application, all of the other stuff is removed or stripped away. So if you only use a few APIs, that's the only thing that's included in your app.
which is very important um, at the end of the day. Now, Xamarin Essentials um, started its life on iOS, Android, and Windows. However, since it ships independently, we are able to add more platforms with the development team in the community, such as watchOS, tvOS, and also Tizen, which is Samsung's operating system for building for their TVs and watches and phones um, that are not running Android, they're running Tizen. So this is really, really cool, right? And this is, this is why it helps that we ship this thing out of band separately is because we can add more platforms. And with the latest release, we actually just added full support for Mac OS. So now from Xamarin Essentials, you can access all of these. And what's nice here is that, yeah, there's more platforms coming as well, because since it's open source, we can add, you know, let's say WPF support or WinForm support or ASP.NET, whatever that looks like inside of it. And there's open pull requests to do that, which is really cool. Um, we just shipped Xamarin Essentials 1.6. And I say we, most of the time I'm saying team is because I actually work with the development team, the PM of Xamarin Essentials, um, and the team and the community all came together and added tons of new features. Actually, I think 80% of the new features um, were submitted by the community for this thing, which is awesome. This added Mac OS support, app actions, contacts, file pickers, media pickers, haptic feedback, and screenshots. And this is in preview today. And uh, here's a little video that kind of shows off all of them. They work on iOS, Android, and Windows. So ability to do app actions like deep linking from your app icon, doing a file picker, so picking a single uh, file, reading that data, picking a specifically like an image, so having filters on it, or even doing multi-file picking, which is really cool. The media picker is similar, but it enables two scenarios, not only picking um, videos and photos, but also taking videos and photos as well, which is cool. On screenshots, you can easily come in and say, take a screenshot and then email that screenshot, right? So if you're doing some sort of uh, um, help desk, you can have that. Contacts is a cool contact picker. So it launches the default contact app, reads back that information, which is really nice. That's actually being expanded out as well. And there's a whole lot more that I implore you to go look um, as well, which is really cool. A lot of questions about that. So yeah, can Xamarin do independent watch OS apps? Yeah, so that's like um, actually pretty important about how .NET works. So with Xamarin um, is the core framework that enables you to build for different um, a uh, Android and, and Apple-based operating systems. Uh, so we have full support for watch OS and tvOS um, that you can build with storyboards and the sort of native UI there, not with cross-platform UI, but you can build them out there, which is nice. And you can add that watchOS application to your Xamarin um, um, iOS application. And then you can use Xamarin Essentials there, which is great. Now let's talk about kind of where we're going here as sort of the next steps, um, because the real goal of the Xamarin team has always been to enable you to build fast, beautiful native apps in less time with less code inside this thriving ecosystem. And hopefully everything I just showed you kind of is to that point of what you just saw is how the, not only the team, the IDE, the libraries and the community have come together, but one thing that's coming in soon, um, in the next month, as we sort of talk about with .NET Conf is sort of the next update to .NET as a core runtime and the sort of journey to a singular .NET. Today we have many .NETs um, that enable you to build for anything. And while it is sort of this unified platform to build for these different operating systems with different um, IDEs and command line and, and, and code tools, there's always been sort of um, different runtimes and compilers and sort of infrastructure that builds them. So when we think about it, we have things like the .NET Framework, .NET Core, and then the Mono and Xamarin runtimes. So our vision, in going into .NET 5 and .NET 6, which are the next versions of .NET, is to merge that type of capability and functionality together into just something called .NET. What if it would be great if it was just called .NET? Uh, so .NET bridges the gap there between a single SDK, single binary or BCL, and a unified tool chain. Oops, 
There we go. And it's focusing on many elements of ensuring that developers can not only build out native apps for specific platforms, but also cross-platform native web apps and native client applications, and ensuring that you have great speed, size, diagnostics, and integrations into cloud backends. Now, with .NET 5, which is set to launch at .NET Conf next month, um, this is going to be the starting point of um, this singular integration. How .NET 5 and .NET 6 works is .NET 5 will be a current release, and then .NET 6 next year, it'll ship every single year in November timeframe, will be an LTS release. So every other year is a long-term support release. So with Xamarin, um, with .NET 5, we're starting the steps going forward to bring together the single SDK, BCL, and a unified tool chain um, into the mix. Our real goal is with .NET 6 is to unify what we've been doing across mobile and desktop with something we call the .NET Multi-Platform App UI, or .NET MAUI. And the goals here are the things that you know and love from Xamarin Forms and Xamarin Essentials and, 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 and all of the great tooling that you've had for years and streamline that entire integration while targeting .NET 6, while adding some additional um, platforms for both mobile and desktop, so first-class support for Windows, uh, UWP, and Mac OS desktop, but also streamlining some of the things that we're doing in the project creation um, to make cross-platform easier. So um, the GitHub repo is open source. I actually have a small video here that kind of shows off some of the new things that we're doing um, for the project system itself, which I think is really exciting. Uh, we're doing a lot of different um, experiments and getting feedback, but one of the things I'm most excited for is what this new sort of experience looks like. So when I do file new, what's going to happen in a .NET MAUI application is I get sort of my main page, my application that I know and love, but the difference is that instead of getting four different projects, what you clearly see on the right-hand side over here is a single app. My app is, the, is what I've called it over here. So this new single project structure says, hey, we have one platform or one project that deploys some multiple platforms. So here I can just come in and I can just deploy um, directly to my Windows uh, machine. So I get an app here, I get my diagnostics, I get my um, file new project, I get the XAML, the data binding I know and love, and I can come in and create my desktop application, get the hot reload, get all the things that sort of I've just showed earlier. Now, um, additionally, uh, all that other sort of functionality that I showed of hot reloading, hot restarting, that's all going to be here too. So it's sort of this next evolution of the tooling story that we've talked about. Um, so this video is a little bit slower than I'd like, but there we go. Let me do this drop down. So now instead of having to sort of swap between different projects, I can swap between iPhone, Android emulators, a lot more, and just simply select my iPhone and then deploy it over to uh, my iPhone like you saw me do earlier. So it's really quick using that same exact um, technology that I showed earlier, and here's the same application running um, on, my, on my device here. So I sort of get that same exact functionality, um, but um, the streamlining of cross-platform, what I think is really, really important. So when we're building apps, yes, we have UI, and yes, we have native API integrations, but the other things that we don't often think about our application resources, our platform-specific code, and that's why we want to bring it all together into a singular, um, a singular model here. So my app has specific resources such as fonts and images, and when I add them into these resource folders, they automatically get resized and embedded into my application. So I no longer have to drag and drop things into three or four different projects, I put them into one place and the build system knows what to do. 
Now, that's a really nice, um, helpful addition besides having to set a bunch of things as different startup projects. But what I also like about this system is that it enables developers to kind of hide their platform code because you don't really need to access it that much. Under platforms, instead of having a bunch of different project heads, you can simply add platform-specific logic into these platform folders. And this will use multi-targeting to automatically compile Android or iOS or Windows code or Mac code um, when you're doing it on that platform, which is really important. So it really sort of streamlines that process um, when you're developing applications. So what we see here is the singular project, singular SDK style project. So this is what that would look like. Very streamlined as far as adding new New different, um, new different targets. Also, that drop down of being able to deploy to any of your emulators, simulators, or your Windows machine from the single drop down. Again, fonts, images automatically handled for you, and also that project specific platform code. Now, there's a lot of other things that we're integrating and looking at for .NET MAUI, um, specifically streamlining um, what. Xamarin Essentials and Xamarin Forms are today and bringing them into the system namespace um, that can be used across more platforms. So Xamarin Essentials can turn into a core platform, very similar to the BCL, or think about calling it system.devices. And of course, um, Xamarin Forms turning into system.maui and creating a singular multi-platform app um, with .NET and also having command line integration and being able to use lightweight code editors such as um, VS Code. Now at the, the core level of iOS and Android and Mac too, right now, you know, you have Xamarin in the name. It's kind of confusing. Is it a Xamarin app? Is it a Xamarin Forms app? Is it traditional? Is it blah, 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 right? It's just going to be called .NET for iOS and .NET for Android, um, very similar to sort of just this is iOS.NET and Android.NET as the core underlying system. And you can still create new iOS and Android apps uh, or, of course, MAUI applications. You can check out all the work that's going into .NET MAUI um, on the GitHub page and look at the different um, outlines, who's supporting what, what operatings, what versions are supported, what app models are supported. Um, something that the team is deeply looking at is Blazor and MVU style development in addition to the MVVM and XAML type development. And those experiments are going on. And a lot of that work will come out in the .NET 6 timeframe. So like I said, .NET um, starting with .NET 5 will release every single year. Uh, and every other year will be an LTS release or a long-term support release. And all of the core fundamental changes for the .NET SDK support and .NET 6 runtime um, will come in .NET 6. Um, same with .NET MAUI and any of the investments and changes there. So um, still a long way off and previews will start to ship in the next few months. So you can kind of go and check things out. And the nice thing is if you start today or already have an existing app, you'll be able to easily migrate if you choose to um, when .NET 6 comes out with different try convert tools to kind of get you uh, off the ground running there too as, as we migrate into these new SDK style stuff. But my recommendation, of course, is you should just create a new Xamarin app today. Use Xamarin Forms, Xamarin Essentials, Xamarin Community Toolkit, which was you know 90% of this talk, because those are the things that you can go and do today, but still have genuine excitement about the future plans of where the team is going with cross-platform development, which is very exciting. And that's it. You can, of course, go to Xamarin.com, which will bring you to the .NET website, where you can learn all about stuff. Um, if you have any questions, you can always reach out to me at any time via email or on Twitter or on GitHub here too.